Boys and girls, what's going on? It's your boy BQ. This is your Impact Lounge Impact Wrestling Review. I'm here. I'm battling the Wi-Fi like I seem to always do. But I will get to the bottom of it and get that smooth stream going once again. We're going to talk Impact like we do each and every week. One time for your mind. Uh, the Steve Macklin thing, I will be doing a separate upload regarding Steve Macklin and my thoughts about that. I feel pretty confident in saying he will not be around much longer, which doesn't make me very happy, but we'll, we will get into that later. We're going to jump right into this episode uh, that happened this past Thursday. And the first match of the evening was Jake something versus Frankie Kazarian. I don't know if they do this on purpose with Jake. It, it, clearly they do, but he's the only wrestler on the roster he, that doesn't weigh anything. He doesn't. He's not from anywhere. So when they do his ring entrance, it's just coming to the ring, Jake something. Like they make him as bland and plain as humanly possible. He is someone that the fan base would love to get behind. And he won that six-way X Division match. It meant nothing. It wasn't a number one contenders match. And here he is. Um the, you know, having a match with Frankie Kazarian. I, I don't say I, I don't want to say it was built off him bumping into him backstage. He was call, he was looking for him, but he was walking around in his wrestling gear backstage and um, called out Frankie Kazarian for his change of heart, his change of attitude. I thought this was a good opener, and it was probably the best match of the show for me. I um, I thought the match I thought the show was okay. Um, it was okay to 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 not okay. <laughs> There were there were some matches on here I really really didn't care for and just some segments I didn't care for, but I thought this was a great opener and Eric Young is continuing the peeping Tom gimmick, watching him from a distance. He did challenge him after the match. Uh, I don't think they're having a match next week, but I think they're just just meeting face to face. So I'm interested in the story. Frank Xarian is doing a great job with everything right now. Then we got Savannah Evans versus Jordan Grace. This was basically a squash match. I don't have any knowledge on this, but I think this was Savannah Evans' last match. I, 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 that's my gut is that they're riding her out of the company with this. I don't know if she's going to wrestle Giselle. Uh, I mean, this is the company that once upon a time, Ter Taryn Terrell got slapped in the face, and then they said she was out of bound for glory because of that. So I don't know that she's ever gonna. I don't know. I don't know that she's gonna wrestle Giselle. And Giselle continue to get over. They're not advertised for next week. And that would be the time to do it. To get uh, Giselle a win before she loses at no surrender. Or sacrifice. I think it's a sacrifice, right? I get these names confused. But it was quick. It was easy. I would not. I would be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if, if she was done after this. And they would, same with Jay Vidal. I think they might be. I think they might both both be done. Um, after the match, because we need a post-match beatdown, Giselle hit uh, Savannah Evans with the X. She seems to hit someone with that X every single week. And uh, she will be cashing in soon enough, right before she loses to Jordan Grace. And then Ash by Elegance will probably show up after the match. Um, very paint-by-numbers thing that they do. Speaking of Ash, they, they promoted that she was going to speak on this episode. I did not like this. I like her. I'm a fan of hers. I will continue to say this gimmick needs to be a home run. The division needs it. They need her to be a top player in the division. This has to hit. She has to be good for this company. Um, but I didn't care for this. I would have preferred they've been doing really good vignettes with her. I would have preferred they just did another vignette, but she was talking directly to the camera you know, conveying her mission statement or whatever, whatever it is, making her announcement. She's going to debut next week. But I just thought this was bad. Uh, regardless of what you think about G. Miller's backstage interviews, maybe you like him more than I do. They're still the worst produced segment on the show. And that's when you bring her out. And it's goofy. It's silly. Uh, G. Miller's part of the act. You know, I, I just I get that feeling she's going to be a part of the act every week backstage. 
rather than just an interviewer. What I mean by that is like, if there's goofiness, she's going to be involved in the goofiness. I'm not saying she's part of the stable, but um, I, I just, again, it's the worst produced segment on the show. And that's when you bring her out. Um, Iceman comes out and Gia says, who are you? He uh, did BTI with you for the last like three years. That's who he is. So we're, we're going back to the phony. Someone works behind the scenes for the company. We're going to put them on screen. No one, no one's seen them before. Uh, let's base this in reality a little bit. We know who he is, you know, Iceman Intel. Like we know who he is. Uh, he, I tell you, Iceman can just rattle a uh, hundred words off and not skip a beat. He doesn't stumble over his words. Nothing. He's a, He's a hell of a talker. Uh, my concern with the gimmick, uh, just based off the little bit we saw, is that the gimmick is going to become Iceman rather than Ash because he was kind of the star of this thing. He He's a big personality. This is not like, you know, Tony Storm with the Butler gimmick where he's just in the background. He's clearly going to be more of a mouthpiece and more involved. And uh, I liked when he was the ring announcer that one set of tapings. I was I was praying to the the heavens that he was going to replace David Penzer. Um, so I thought he did a good job with that. But he's been doing good work for the company for a few years now. Um, I just didn't like this. I thought involving Ash in the worst produced segment of every show just made her look like everybody else, and it just what it didn't feel special to me. And I. I I'm going to say it again. This has to be a home run, this gimmick, because the the division is in a lot of trouble at the top. Like, this has to be good. My concern is she's probably going to wrestle for the title very quickly, and Jordan just won it. I don't think she needs to be losing. I don't think she'll lose. I think she's actually, I think Jordan's going to have an extremely quick knockouts title run. Then we got, um, speaking of bad backstage editing and lighting, we got Alan Angel's sound check, except it's on purpose. It's uh, trolling BQ for sure. It's got the pink and purple lights and all that good stuff. And he had Simon Gotch out there. And I don't know that a single human being on the planet knew that Simon Gotch was his opponent the night that he got signed. So people are praising him the long-term storytelling. I don't think it was ever meant to be a long-term story. I think it was convenient. And it works, and it gives us a reason to care about the match. We don't know if he's going to be around for a bit or if it's just... Um, I think it's probably a one-off. I think he's going to wrestle next week against some Jay Brown. He's going to wrestle Josh and lose, and we never see him again. That's what I, I think it's going to be. The one concern I have with um, Simon Gotch is that the, the graphic they put out was like black and white. Ash by Elegance already has gotten some heat for looking like Tony Storm, even though they're completely different gimmicks. So don't have, don't recycle the fucking Vaude villain shit. I hope that's not what they do. I was a big Vaude villains fan once upon a time. Let me tell you, I was very entertained by them, but I hope that's not what they're doing with him. He still got the handlebar mustache and all that. I mean, there doesn't seem to be much change in his gimmick, but we'll see what happens when he wrestles next week. Mike, the Mike Gilbert match of the evening, um, ABC versus the Grizzly Young Bets. I'm going to be a thousand percent honest with you. I fast forwarded through this. I've said many times, I don't care. I don't like the Grizzly Young Bets. They do nothing for me. Every time you do a best of three, there's going to be three matches. So I knew who was going to win. Why was I going to sit through a bunch of choreo choreographed finish, uh, excuse me, choreographed tandem moves and all that stuff, I just did not care to watch this match. I knew the ABC was going to win. They won, so I fast-forwarded through that. If it makes me a bad boy and a bad podcaster, I apologize. I just really didn't want to watch it. Was there a post-match beatdown after this? Because I feel like there was, but I, I could be wrong. But there's post-match beatdowns after everything now. So sometimes you just assume. Dirty Dango had his little segment always entertaining at least now that he's put a mission statement out there and he's saying, Hey, we're going to wrestle a bunch of jobbers every week. 
do people want to see that? Probably not, but at least, at least there's a little bit of a story rather than, rather than every week them just wrestling the jobbers. Because I said that last week, what, what is their mission? Like, what are they doing? What are they trying to accomplish? That's never been, really been communicated. They lose when it matters. So now there's, you know, I don't know if there's like treading water with this gimmick, but they're just going to wrestle um, some J Brones going forward. So if that's what they're going to do, all good. All good. Uh, they got a Mustafa Ali segment. He is your future X Division champion. He'll win it in his first match. Um, and then the good hands who seem to be on Ali's nuts had a little talking segment within 10 seconds. Chris Saban is right there. Couldn't be more than a few feet away from him. And the good hands are hanging out with a couple of, you know, jabrones. They look like, they look like what I envisioned the guys who do the post editing of the GM Miller segments look like. That's probably who they were. Uh, just a couple nondescript guys. I did think it was funny when one of them actually addressed Chris Saban said, are you okay or whatever? And he said, I'm fine guy. I've never met before. So I thought that was all good. Chris Saban's a pretty good actor. I didn't like the, the uh, swingers palace stuff. Speaking of swinger, is he on the roster page still? Is there, is there room for him in this new TNA? Like you would think we would have seen him on screen at this point already. And we haven't at all. So that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, this was okay. This was this was entertaining enough, but I mean, good hands. I don't know what they're doing with Ali, just being on his nuts. Crazy Steve took on Rhino. Um, I didn't pay a lot of attention to this because I didn't care. I do like Crazy Steve. Um, he won with, I don't know, fork, knife, spoon. I kind of even wasn't really paying attention. Uh, they're like we're likely going to get a dot com, a dot combat match. This is not the last time they're going to wrestle. I assure you. Um, I think with the uh, TNA Plus show coming up here soon, I don't even remember what it's called. Uh, I think that we're going to get them again. It's going to be no DQ. It's going to be a street fight. It's going to be dope dot combat. It's going to be something like that. You know, don't really care. I feel like I'm not caring a lot about what's going on tonight. And speaking of not caring, this was probably my least favorite part of the show was this PCO vignette they did backstage. And he's just yelling. Maybe he said con. I, I don't even freaking know. I just didn't like it. I just don't like him. I know he's really over with you guys, but he just can't. Then Dean took on Joe Hendry. It was a non-contest. That's what I'm saying. This episode wasn't. It was okay, but it was kind of like not good at the same time. This match never got off the ground. AJ Francis came out, debuted his own video, which I was entertained by. I thought it started off a little slow, but then it got it got pretty good, in my opinion. Um, and I do have an educated opinion when it comes to hip hop, so if I say it's good, I think it's good. Um, this what I did not like about this is that I would have liked to see Joe and I mean, excuse me, AJ Francis get some heat here. Because Joe Hendry with his gimmick, he's he, he's always the one upper, always. It's very rare that he ends up on his ass after a segment. It's it just he it just. So I would have had AJ Francis play the video, throw Joe Hendry off his game a little bit because he's not used to people making videos about him, and then Joe and then Dean are winning the match. But instead. Joe Hendry had a video prepared, break glass in case of emergency, got a one up my opponent like I always do and they played a video that he clearly had prepared because he clearly knew AJ Francis was going to say something because he even said in the song something about AJ doing his own video so I didn't like this I didn't think the the video was that good I would have just liked to have seen AJ Francis who I'm really enjoying I know people don't like him uh, I'm entertained by it I'm looking forward to see what he does in NWA. I might even tune in to see what he does with MLW. Like, I'm really interested in what he does. I know he can't wrestle that good. I like characters. Um, and he's involved with Rich Swan, which I can dig that. But but again, I just, I just would have rather AJ Francis get some heat 
but instead Joe Hendry had to make him look like a big goof. So I didn't, I didn't really care for that. Um, <clears throat> then they showed Nick Nemeth getting jumped by Steve Macklin in Puerto Rico. And Trent Seven walks up because they're talking to Steve Macklin and the Rascals. Steve Macklin be having the most random stables on this show. I had said when he was the world champion, he should have had his own security detail. We had four security guys with him at all times that were indie guys that actually could wrestle with him. If he kind of like Sue Young could do tag team partners with the the undead bridesmaid or or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like I would have I would have preferred something like that with, with Macklin. They just give him random opponents, even though this looks interesting. And uh Trent Seven came up, the 50 year old wrestler. And he he made it. He did make a crack. I thought was funny about Steve Ma- uh, Wentz or, or Miguel wearing Macklin's shirt. I don't remember who it was exactly, but I guess we're gonna get Trent Seven versus Steve Macklin next week. So looking forward to that. Killer, yeah, this was not a good episode. I, I, you, you go through these results, and it's just like this just wasn't very good. It was all squashes. It was no contest. It was so Killer Kelly, the once undefeated, the once part of part of the undefeated MK Ultra takes on Danny Luna and Jody Threat. Well, she took on Joni, Danny Luna with Jody Threat. They don't beat anybody. Danny Luna's never beat anybody on this show, and she gets a bullshit win in just a couple minutes. Um, did not like this. They're doing this because they want Danny Luna and Jody Threat to get over as a team. I don't even think you have to do that because all you have to do is form a team and you're going to wrestle for the title. So just wait your turn. You're going to be the next to challengers. I have concern that they're going to make this a three-way now, which I hope to God they don't do because there's no other people to defend the damn belt against. So please don't do that. You're already bringing in jobbers to wrestle Ash by Elegance and to wrestle... Oh, like Prudius and Dango. Like, just have, if you want to get these two girls over, like, have them team up against some jobbers. You know, um, I didn't think they needed to beat Killer Kelly. So, they usually have Killer Kelly lose, though. When MK Ultra splits up, like, Masha wins, but Kelly loses. Guess what happened after this match? Just guess. It was a post match beatdown. And then Decay came running down. At least Decay ran to the ring. It wasn't like Trent Seven last week, just, you know, well, like he's walking through them all, just kind of strolling up there. At least Decay came out and ran and scared him off. But it's another post-match beatdown angle. I am I am very concerned that they're going to make this a three-way coming up. I, 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 I pray not. Please, 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 no. I... Uh, yeah, it is no surrender. I was like, is no surrender a sacrifice? Um I there's a good 30% chance it's gonna be a, a fucking three-way at no surrender, which is gonna be absolutely unnecessary. Um, they announced that Josh Alexander would take on Salmon Gotch there. And we got the main event, Moose versus Kushida. This was this was really good. It wasn't overly long. It was uh, it was a really good match and I think the reason I got a little more into it is because now Kushida is a signed talent with the company. So it made me care about him a little bit more. And this was good. This was a, this was a nice fun main event for this stage in the year, you know? Yeah. They have a six man tag coming up against no surrender. So of course you got to put one guy against another. That's fine. This was, this was good. Um, I think I already said this once before. Because I know I said this, that Eddie Edwards, no one in TNA history gets staler, quicker, and longer than Eddie Edwards. Like everything with him is a beat horse. I mean, a beat, uh, a dead horse beaten until he eventually changes his gimmick up. I wish that the system didn't tailor their green, their color scheme to Eddie Edwards. I think they should have tailored it to Moose. Because Eddie Edwards wears the same thing all the time, and it's still the ride or die shirt, and he's fat. You know, I just 
I would have liked to just see him change his, his gimmick a little bit, and I would love to see him get in better shape as being a part of this with Moose now. Um, and then after the match, it's a post-match beatdown. Again. So one thing about the system, I really like them. I really, really do. I, I truly do. I just want to see, like, I just want more from Eddie Edwards. That's all it is. But the system, when they come down, it's always the same. You know, Alicia with his arm out like this, Eddie doing his weird, like, flat hand clap. It's just always kind of the same shit with these guys. I want to see more of the system, but I just want to see more of the system. Like, I want Brian Myers, Eddie Edwards, a breakout of, you know, break out a little bit with this group. No, this this was a good good main event. And then, you know, it's... It's a beat down after the match. And then Alex Shelley and Kevin Knight come down. I hope that Kevin Knight gets some kind of push out of all this. I really do. He's probably going to take the pin here coming up, but he's just so talented and I'm glad he's part of this and that he's, you know, he's getting some feature matches because he's very, very good. That's going to do it for me. This was one of my quicker reviews. I usually run about 45 minutes. This was 21 minutes. A lot of it was because I didn't watch that Chris Bay, you know, the ABC match versus uh, the Grizzled Young Vets. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to watch the third one. Grizzled Young Vets are going to win the titles most likely. They don't do it for me. So I hope this next episode is a little better. I think the card looked a little bit better. So I just hope it is. I hope it is. I hope it's a good go-home show. We need to get to... No Surrender, see what No Surrender's like, get to these New Orleans tapings, and we're going to see are there going to be obvious changes on screen from what we've been seeing here so far. Who knows? So that is it for today. Quickest review I've probably ever done, but I'm your boy BQ. I'm out. Peace.